How's it going guys? Welcome back to my channel Nipples Clips. Now today I am at BBC Somerset getting interviewed on the radio to speak about type 1 diabetes and mental health. They're going to be asking me questions about how I use social media as my voice to get my word out there. So without further ado, let's head in and get interviewed. Hi Jane. Hi, you alright? Yeah, so I'm Excellent. Hi, nice to meet you. And well, you? How are you? Not too bad. It's a bit hot but... It's cool in here That's anyway. Nice. Thank cool you. Up. How are you feeling? About to head in, a little bit nervous. See what happens I'm going to love me again plays here at BBC Somerset. It's the evening show. It's connected. This is Ben here uh, with you through until 10 o'clock tonight. Pleasure to have your company. So it's all about social media on a Thursday night on the show. Uh, pleased to say uh, we're in the company of Joe tonight. Hi, Joe. How's it going? You all right? Yeah, very well, thanks. Joe Nichols. Welcome to the studio. Uh, I'm not quite sure whose show's who tonight. <laughs> uh, am I on your show or are you on my show? <laughs> Bit of both, What's really, 50-50. <laughs> so, Joe, you've got a YouTube channel. Yeah, YouTube which channel. Is, is, a, is a posh way of saying it's basically a TV show, but just by the internet, <laughs> that you film yourself yeah. with your camera. And you've brought your camera in. Is it? Are we recording now? We are, yet. yeah. Yeah, being filmed now, yeah. <laughs> Right, Joe, Joe's brought some, 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 some helpers along tonight, Meg and Toby. Meg and Toby are part of Joe's entourage um, and they're, they're the production crew um, doing Joe's YouTube videos. So we've got to make sure the camera's all set on and it's all recording, we're all happy, we're all good to go. <laughs> um, right, so Joe, perhaps you better explain um, what, what it is that, um, that we're, we're talking to you about. It's a, it's a, it's a topic very close to your heart, um, it, it's, um, it's to do with uh, diabetes, which is something that you were uh, um, diagnosed with how many years ago? Uh, so we're coming up to five uh, on October 8th, 2014. So yeah, coming up to five very soon. Wow, blimey. So you're still a teenager. Yeah, yeah, 19, <laughs> still in the teens. Not, not long to go now nah, before, you, before you shake that one off. Um, so uh, just explain to us um, what, because there'll be people out there who don't know, uh, what, what, um, what, what diabetes is, first of all. Um, so firstly, uh, diabetes type one is the illness. Uh, you inherit it. It's um, you know it runs in your genes. Yeah. Um, it's all about taking care of your blood sugars. So right now my pancreas doesn't actually work. Right. Um, so I need to function my pancreas physically myself. Yeah. Whether it be through giving myself insulin with injections mm -hmm. or giving myself sugar, food and drinks. So I need to take care of my own pancreas. Yeah. Um, in order to keep my blood sugars stabilised and balanced equally. So we say a balance. It's like. Having too much sugar's bad, and having yeah. not enough sugar's yeah. presumably also too bad. much insulin's too bad, too little insulin's too bad. Same yeah. with sugar. Yeah. So my blood sugars need to range from four to eight. Okay. Um, if they're too low, I'll go hypo. If they're too high, I'll go hyper. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. And and presumably neither of those things are a good thing, nah. especially when you're a teenager, right? Nah, they're absolutely horrible. It feels physically horrible. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's very important to keep them balanced, and it also benefits. Um, sort of my lifestyle and my physical health in the future. Mm. Have my blood sugars high for too long, it's gonna damage my body, damage my nerves, damage my eyesight, um, damage my limbs. Um, so yeah, as a, as a lifelong effect, if I don't look after myself now, yeah. so it's very important to keep it balanced. So you're very lucky in a way that you were diagnosed when you were. Yeah, yeah, very lucky actually. Um, being 14, obviously I'm taking care of myself. I'm a big boy, I'm year 10. Um, <laughs> well, so they keep telling you. Yeah, they keep telling me, but my sister's just been diagnosed. Uh, she's only 11, so it's a bit different. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, goodness. 11 years old, so, mm. you know. So this thing that you've got, you say it's hereditary, so it runs in your family. So everybody in your family going back through the family tree has it, or is it just, does it skip generations? Yeah, yeah so it, can, it can skip generations. Um, my dad has it. That's how me and my sisters inherited it. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, it literally can skip generations, or it can go straight down family genes. Yeah, so in some ways, not entirely unexpected, nah. but did it catch you by surprise? Oh yeah, 100%. I've always been like the physical fit, sporty one, you know, it's me wanting to join the army, it's not going to happen to me. And one uh, day, boom, Yeah. It all goes downhill, but it is what it is. Yeah, so presumably at that age, you had a, a bunch of things that you wanted to do with your life, and were you were you, were you kind of hoping you weren't going to get diabetes, or were you kind of half expecting it? What, what was the... Yeah, so... um. In terms of how how much of a percentage I was going to get it, it was pretty small. Right. Um, there's more chance of the older sibling getting it. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, it was a bit of a shock to be honest. Like, I feel like 
especially of how late it was, because people tend to get diagnosed quite early on. Yeah. Being 14, that's that's quite late. Yeah. Um, and obviously me being the one wanting to join the army, in the military, I just didn't figure it happened to me, but... So you're kind of thinking, oh, I, I've, I've got away with this. Yeah, I've got away with all this. Right. It's not me, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was the... Talk us through the moment when... Or the moments. I mean, the, the, the kind of period of time leading up to when it, it sort of dawned on you that this might be a problem. So um, for about a week, I hardly slept. I was getting up in the night, constantly going for a wee, because that's one of the symptoms when your blood sugars are high. Yeah. Um, I was so thirsty, I was so dehydrated. And one day I come downstairs and I said to my mum, before I went to bed, I said, is there mm. anything I can have that's going to stop me getting up and going to the toilet? Uh, my parents both then recognised that, you know, that this isn't right, check his blood sugars. My blood sugars were ridiculously high. They were in the 30s, so quite dangerously high. Oh, my and word. Instantly, obviously my dad, being a diabetic, knew what to do. Uh, went to hospital, started having my tests and stuff. Mm. Um, and yeah, straight away knew I was a diabetic. So from the point that you realised that things were not quite right to the point of being diagnosed, how, how long was that? Yeah, so about a week, which is quite dangerous to leave it. Yeah. Um, anything could have happened. I could have gone into a coma from having high blood sugars. Anything could have happened. So I was quite fortunate to to be all right. To get that checked out yeah. and, and get and and so um, so so from that point forward, your life is is, is kind of changed presumably quite dramatically. Yeah, hundred percent. The day to day life is so difficult, um, and that's one of the hard things that a lot of people don't understand. So first thing I do when I wake up is check my blood sugars work out how much carbohydrates I'm having, weigh my food, give myself mm. an injection, and that just carries on throughout the day. A lot of people see it, sort of see it as, oh, you can't eat that, you can't you can't do that and all this, and it's, it's nothing like that. It's yeah. nothing like that. There's, there must be lots of misconceptions around. Oh yeah, 100%. What's the biggest, what's the biggest misconception you've heard from, from people talking about? Um, literally, people saying, oh, you're not diabetic, you're not overweight, you're not fat, you're, do you know what I mean? And yeah. It's, it's not that. Yeah. It's not that. So, your sort of daily routine then, just to kind of give people an idea of, of, of sort of how you live your life now, from when you wake up to when you go to sleep, take us through what you do. So constantly checking my blood throughout the day, keeping, keeping sure that uh, my blood sugars are in, within range, mm -hmm. giving myself injections for each meal and snack that I have, each drink, anything with sugar has to have an injection. Um, it's not as easy as just giving yourself an injection because you have to weigh your food, calculate how many carbohydrates you have, um, and also then you have a ratio of how much insulin you need throughout that day so the amount of insulin I have per sugar carbs changes throughout the day yeah so it's literally it's basic it's maths throughout the whole day I was gonna say it's maths and injections throughout the whole day is what it is did you did, did you do quite well in your maths exams I passed I passed <laughs> maths so it's not too bad it's not too bad you had plenty of practice yeah every day oh yeah 100% so how how often do you, I mean, how do you how do you actually check your your your, your blood levels? How does so it work? So you have a finger pricker. Mm -hmm. You put it against your fingertip. Mm. Press the button. A little pin comes out. Pricks your finger. A drop of blood. You then put a test strip into a machine, mm. and then the test strip sucks up the blood, and it just reads the sugar yeah. uh, in the blood. Is it quite a compact little thing? Yeah, it's literally like pulling out a mobile phone. Yeah, yeah. Like you wouldn't be able to tell. But it's something you don't really want to forget in your in yeah. your bag when you go out, right? <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> and the um and the injections. I mean, um, I, I've seen people um inject themselves before, um, who have diabetes, and it looks it looks relatively, you know, straightforward. Yeah. Is it is it is it as straightforward as yeah, it looks? Yeah, literally. So with the machine that you've pricked your, uh, pricked your finger with and tested your bloods worked out the carbs, it also tells you how much insulin to have. Mm. So you literally turn in the dial on the injection, using a new needle each time, just yeah. giving yourself an injection, a bit of fat. I tend to use my thighs on my stomach. Um, and yeah, it's literally as simple as that. You've, um, you've talked quite openly on online about the sort of effect that this has had on you subsequently. So did, did, it, sort of, did it sort of take its toll on you mentally straight away or was it something that kind of took a while to kind of come to terms with? Um, so yeah, I find um, in the first instance when I was first diagnosed, I was kind of numb from everything. I, I can't really explain how I felt. Obviously I was scared. Hmm. Obviously knew straight away I wasn't going to be able to join the army, but I was kind of numb. I was more focused on, right, I need to learn this new lifestyle. I need to adapt to this new lifestyle. And over time and even to this day, I still struggle to, to come to peace with it. I still yeah. struggle to 
understand why me, why is it me that can't join the army, the one person that wanted to do this for like, the whole childhood. Um, so yeah, like some days I could be like, right, let's do it, let's check my bloods, let's look after myself, it's cool, it is what it is. And other days I could be sat there wondering like, why me, like, why has it happened to me? Yeah. So yeah. From a, from a sort of um, growing up and socialising perspective as well, I mean, there, I'd imagine there are people out there who have sort of preconceptions of how that affects you know, you're you're a teenager, right? So, yeah. um, you, you know, um, young people like to go out. They like to socialise. Yeah. You know, they like to go to pubs, yeah. have a drink. That involves lots of sugar. Yeah. Um, is that something that that um that you struggle with? Um. So yeah, it, it it's not as easy for me to go out and just have a drink. Yeah. Um. The only thing is, alcohol blocks um insulin from absorbing. Yeah. So I will give myself um insulin injections for the first two pints that I have because yeah. I drink cider. So it's got uh, so that's full of sugar. Full of sugar. <laughs> it's even worse. Um, yeah. And then after that, uh, I don't have any insulin. Yeah. And then the next morning, I wake up and my bloods will be high. So it's straight to correcting that, fixing that, getting yeah. it sorted. Yeah. So that I mean, it's, it's quite a risk associated with with oh, yeah, going 100%. out and having a good time, yeah. isn't there? Yeah. Which, which you know adds a bit of pressure to you. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've got the. I mean, if you're drinking cider, you've got the endorphins from that anyway. <laughs> yeah. <but> literally. <laughs> yeah. It must be a bit of a worry in the back of your head. Um, so, Joe, in a, in a minute, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about um, what, you, what you've sort of been doing lately to try and kind of um, find something for you to sort of channel your energy and stuff. You do, I know yeah. you're doing the social media stuff, which is great. Um, anything else that you, I mean, you mentioned that you, you wanted to go into the army, which obviously, um, presumably, completely ruled out for you. Is there, there's nothing yeah, you can do? Yeah, absolutely nothing. I can't do any admin work in an office, nothing. Nothing to do with the army. Yeah. yeah, so that's pretty pretty gutting yeah, for you. Yeah, pretty gutting. Um, was that something you realised straight away when you were diagnosed? Yeah, I, I knew that wouldn't pass on medical. I knew yeah. straight away. Yeah. Um, I remember like, getting all of my bloods and stuff tested and taken, and they were asking me like just sort of for comfort, asking me what I wanted to do, and I said I wanted to join the army, and they was like, oh, that's nice, but I knew in the back mm. of my head, but I knew straight yeah. away. Yeah. So so for you now, it's about trying to find something else to drive you forward right yeah 100 percent. so um, has, has the uh has the video side of things been been very much part of that presumably is there, is there are there other things that you want that you're sort of you've got your eye on as a career yeah so um since my sister being diagnosed um obviously it was very very scary for her at the age of 11 she trusted me after speaking to her um and convincing her to do her injection. She wouldn't let the nurses do her injection, she wouldn't let my dad do injection, but she let me. Right, and that yeah. feeling of helping was like amazing. And I, I wanna be someone who like motivates others, I wanna, I wanna be like this happy energy, I wanna help people out. And so what better to do that than with something I'm good at, diabetes. Yeah. And so I kinda wanna do um, like public speaking, speaking about diabetes, educating right. people, helping people out. That's sort of like a, a career option in my head. I've been to my primary school and I've done a little talk. Yeah. And the pupils really enjoyed it. So. What was that yeah. like going back to your old primary yeah. school? Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. <laughs> the teachers recognised me, which is all right. So yeah. it's all good. Yeah, and the kids behave themselves. Yeah, yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. That's all good. That's all good. Probably unlike when you were at the primary school. Oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm being rude. I'm being rude. Listen, Joe, it's been fascinating to talk to you. I will come back and have a little bit, chat, bit of a chat about your YouTube stuff in a minute uh, after we hear a bit of David Getter now on BBC Somerset. Been connected. It's the evening show. We're with them, um, with Joe, and um, Joe's brought his production crew in tonight. Meg and Toby, and um, Joe, uh, <laughs> Joe Nichols. Uh, he's a local lad. You're from Torn tonight, you? Yeah, from yeah. Torn. Yeah. And uh, we've been, just, been it's, it's always good to have a little chat when the records are playing because you discover some of the things that you might want to talk about. You also discover some of the things that you can't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> we discovered Joe's got a bit of a rebellious streak, and um, Meg, 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 who runs Joe's social media, who sat in the corner of the studio, she doesn't speak. <laughs> Meg doesn't speak. She really doesn't speak. We were looking at her, trying to encourage her to say something. But she's not. She's got a big smile on her face. Uh, but Meg's job basically is to run your your um, your social media whilst you're doing stuff, and um, and then edit it down and make sure you're not saying anything that you shouldn't be saying. Yeah. Exactly that. exactly that. Yeah, so we were just talking about some of the activities that you like to get up to um, in your spare time. Um, some of which are questionable. Not, not, not really bad stuff, but you like to climb things. Yeah, I like. it's not it's not a good habit to be in, but I like adrenaline. Yeah. It's the best way to put it. I like adrenaline. Which is appropriate, right? Which is appropriate, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's the best way of saying it. You like to keep yourself an adrenaline rush um, by climbing things, some, sometimes 
things that you're allowed to climb, sometimes things that people might frown upon. <laughs> for you. We'll leave it there, we're not going to talk right. about it. <laughs> but it did make me chuckle. Um, and we discovered that you like to play football as well. Yeah, I've loved football, always have. I've yeah, who do you support? I support Liverpool. Just we did support Champions Liverpool! League. Just won the Champions League, oh, so it's all right. Right, well, we'll, we'll bury that, we'll bury that. Ah, brilliant. My, my, my team have just relegated from the Football League. Oh no. So, <clears throat> so we'll gloss over that, but well done for that, well done for that. You, we'll, we'll, we'll allow you that little moment of celebration. <laughs> uh, so, um, so, so, do you still play football in, in the same way that you used to before you got diagnosed with diabetes? Uh, it become become a bit of a challenge, but something you can overcome. So before, I'd rock up on a Sunday league, got all my kit, get changed, play football. Uh, when I become diagnosed, I, I stop playing shortly after because it's it's things like bringing isotonic drinks, bringing cereal bars, checking your bloods at half time. It's just a lot of manic. Um, like I said, like it's, you can overcome it. Yeah. It's just just time consuming. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a real pain. faff, yeah. presumably, isn't it? Yeah, and you've basically. got to you, you want to people that's got a massive sort of mental checklist before yeah. you go. You're right, tick that. I've got that. Yeah. Yes, we've got that. Mm. Yeah, done. Yeah, <laughs> tick the box. We can, we're good to go. And, and do, do you get your, some of your friends and family are sort of stood by the door, kind of look at their rocks? Yeah. And oh, for yeah. Food, come on, <laughs> get on with it. Hurry up. Yeah. But you've, with me, it's it's. I take forever to tie my shoelaces, but it's kind of kind of puts that in a bit of shade now. Oh, and yeah. I realise all the stuff that you have to manage before you go out. <laughs> okay. So, um, so, so, so you're into your football, uh, but you now you now do that for a bit of recreation, a bit of leisure, and to yeah. to let off steam. Um, but it did get you into doing YouTube videos. Yeah. Um, so when I first started my channel four or five years ago, back at the end of school, I literally I was so inspired um, by two channels, EAB Skills and Power and Precision just to do football freestyle, take free kicks. So it's less of actually playing in-game football, just yeah. more like tricks and showing off. Like, yeah. I loved it, I literally <laughs> loved it. Yeah, so whilst everybody else was um, was watching EastEnders, you're watching like um, you know, football videos yeah. on YouTube. How and... to do certain tricks and tutorials. Yeah, well, that's pretty yeah. cool. So, um, so, so from that, what was it that sort of made you go from that and make the leap to doing videos about health stuff and mental health and, and diabetes and that kind of thing. Yeah, so um, as I left school, um, I begin I began to think about more of ex expanding my, my audience. Yeah. I started introducing new videos, like exploring videos, just speaking to the camera. Um, and then when things started to get a bit more tough for me mentally, that was when I realised I need to help others as well. Mm. It's not just me that's down, it's not just me that needs help. And that one of the one of the best feelings you can have is after helping somebody and so like using things like YouTube and social media platforms to get your voice out there because it's your voice they're listening to yeah so you make of it what you want and if you can use that for good then it's awesome like you feel so good getting messages from people getting comments of love it's like it's unbelievable feeling I'll yeah. get people on nights out that I don't even know come up to me and be like yo I'm mad respect for that I rate this and it's such a good feeling that is Such that that is wonderful, isn't it? And and, and getting getting that instant feedback from yeah. from what you're doing is, is is probably one of the biggest sort of power of YouTube, almost, isn't yeah. it? And that yes, all right, you can get your negative comment as yeah. well. I'm sure you've you've had a oh, few yeah, trolls well, in your time, yeah. but when you receive the positive feedback, does that almost kind of outweigh? Oh yeah, completely outweighs it. Like ten negative comments is nothing to one positive because that one positive can be. The reason why you've made the video, like if you can change one person's perspective or something, then amazing, you've you've made it. Yeah. So when when you did that first video and and you had some feedback from that, is that what sort of kind of inspired you then to carry? Oh carry yeah, a hundred percent. Just that feeling of helping others, just amplified the way that I felt um, in terms of in a positive way. And so I was like, right, I need to keep doing this. I need to get a good schedule in, make more videos, just helping others, inspiring others. I have a little saying. It's yeah. I aspire to inspire, so I want to help as many people as I can, whether it be mentally, physically, if they just want to like rent, uh, vent to me or rant to me, like I love it. Brilliant, brilliant. So, um, in terms of your YouTube setup, um, did you have any kind of like worries about how you're going to get started? Did you just, or did you just kind of pick up the camera and run with it? How did it, how yeah. did it start? So when I first started, it was literally at the time just a little tablet, film and editing on there with a little um, like watermark over the top. Right. So literally just basic <laughs> editing, basic filming. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, just as time went on, obviously as I got a bit older, I started buying my own things. Sometimes I used my phone to film, using camera, 
my mate's cameras. Um, if I edit, it could be like on my phone, my MacBook, um, on my friend's equipment. So yeah, it's, it's come a long way to be fair. It's come a long it, way. It, it, it has, and I've seen it. And um, your, you know, your 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 editing skills are obviously kind of coming on leaps and bounds yeah. and stuff. But um, your um, when did you decide to sort of go big and get get all the proper gear? And because I'm looking at your camera now, and I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a geek. Yeah. Right? So. so I'm looking at that. I'm going. Well, that's nice. A bit of shiny, it's so, shiny tech. It's so important to have friends like Toby and Meg that to support you. Yeah. Uh, we've got our own little group chat going. So if we need help with things like this, um, like they'll just like, just come sort each other out, help each other out. Yeah. We all we all want to get to that top level. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to help people out to get there yourself. Yeah. What is the what is the top level? You. Where, where is that? Because because you've got it. Yeah, I mean, you've got to. You're saying you're going to aspire yeah. to something. Yeah. When when do you sit back and go? I've I've done it. I've made it. In in the world of YouTube, what what is that for you? Um. Probably when I've sat there and I've got a YouTube plaque that says 100,000 subscribers to my channel, and yeah, I've, I've got okay. all the equipment, and I I'm just doing it full time, yeah. uh, making a living off it, yeah. and just helping so many people out. 100,000 subscribers. 100,000 nice. subscribers. So where, where are we now? Less than 1,000. Right, okay, so we need to just, we need to like times by 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, we'll get and we're good. Well, I, hopefully with our help. <laughs> <laughs> What's the YouTube channel called? Uh, so the channel's called Nichols Clips. Nichols Clips? Nichols Clips on YouTube. Stick that into your search engine. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you'll find it, um, and uh, and and there's a fair amount of clickbait on there as well. There is, there is a fair amount of clickbait. <laughs> but um, but all the recent stuff is all to do with your your, your health and your well-being yeah. stuff, and some really interesting stuff as well. Because talk us through the format of how how you, you one of your kind of standard videos works. Because I think it's really interesting how you set it up. Um, so the way I'll get the idea is kind of based off how I'm feeling at the time. So if I'm if I'm wanting to be a bit more happy, mm. I'll make a video on advising people on how to be more happy. Yeah. Because I like to just practice what I preach. Like if I'm if I'm giving someone advice, I need to take it myself. Um, I'll make the video. Uh, I'll schedule it to be out on a Sunday at eight, um, and I'll promote it beforehand. Bring it out and just promote it after. Um, so it's kind of your taking people on a bit of a journey with yeah. you so oh, you're, yeah. you, you you you're kind of feeling something or getting involved in something or or, or or trying to kind of come come to terms with a particular i don't know symptom or yeah or or, or or a way that you're having to deal with what you've got and um and then you you, you put your video together and you're kind of taking people with you on that yeah. experience <clears throat> what's interesting is 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 some of the questions that you get oh yeah so um, you're getting questions from people that, that have watched the video and then you're kind of almost, I've seen videos where you're kind of answering those questions yeah. again af afterwards. So you're kind of kind of involving the people who are commenting on your videos. Yeah, it's in basically building experience. a community, um, bringing people in and then just sort of keeping them there as well. So when they do comment support, when they do ask questions, I reply and answer their questions. Yeah. Just to sort of, you know, stay connected, make them feel connected. Yeah. And you've got presumably you, now you've got quite a lot of followers. You get people that come back again and yeah, and, and, and yeah, watch, I see you know, the same follow, faces. Follow yeah. videos. How long does it take to, to to make a video now for you? Is what's the sort of standard turnaround? Oh, it can vary. Like just a simple, um, just say like a ten minute video. Yeah, could be filmed for twenty minutes, and obviously cut down to ten. Yeah. Um, the editing, just rewatching it and rewatching it and rewatching it, could be an hour. It could be two. It could be four. Yeah, um, and then it doesn't just stop there because obviously you've then got to promote it and keep promoting it. Yeah, uh, just keep it going. And obviously with with it being YouTube, uh, unless you delete it, yeah, unless you delete <laughs> it, it, it lives on. There. Yeah, it's always going to be there. Listen, Joe, it's been it's been amazing to talk to you. Best of luck with all the with all the promotion and all the videos. Yeah, thank you so we much. shall be following it uh, with it with interest. Just for people who who want to go and have a look at some of the things you've already produced, just remind us what the YouTube channel's called. Uh, so the channel's Nichols Clips on YouTube. Uh, yeah, check it out. Check it out, and um, who knows? We'll get we will get to that yeah. hundred thousand follower mark, and, and we'll remember you coming into um, little old BBC Somerset and having a chat with us about it. I will. Thank you. <laughs> All right, many thanks for that, Joe, and many thanks to Meg and Toby for helping you out uh, this evening. Thanks for coming in, guys. Perfect. Much appreciated. Thank you. Cheers.